Thank you for your introduction. For me, it's a very big pleasure to see you again, even if uh, with such a large distance. Um, Dr. Kamal uh, asked me to talk about the uh, watch and wait policy, and particularly to start talking about uh, what's chemo radiation in rectal cancer, then watch and wait policy, what it is, why, when, mainly, and uh, if this is an acceptable therapeutic option based on international guidelines. Okay, chemo radiation in rectal cancer. It is the most important category one treatment option for locally advanced rectal cancer based on international guidelines. I can see from this slide. Uh, it's uh, the favorite uh, um, treatment, okay, in T3, T4 rectal cancer or in node positive rectal cancer. Why? Simply because uh, some good years ago, uh, a randomized studies demonstrated very clearly that the preoperative chemotherapy radiation compared to postoperative chemo radiation is able to significantly reduce the rate of local recurrences. And it is also able to reduce significantly the rate of acute toxicity and late toxicity. Moreover, we have several evidence showing us that preoperative chemoradiation is able to improve the rate of sphincter saving procedures. Why? On the left, you can see a large rectal cancer. You see the stenosis of the bowel. In this case, the lower pole, I hope you see my arrow moving, the lower pole of the tumor is very close to the anal canal, meaning the surgeon to respect a safe imaging here cannot perform an anterior resection. He has to go for an abdominal perineal resection, meaning he has to remove the sphincter. But after chemo radiation, what we see is generally this. It's a very good clinical response. The tumor is smaller. The tumor is far from the anal canal. In this situation, it's very easy for the site to perform an anterior resection. So preoperative chemo radiation is the standard treatment in this situation. It's very important, the response to chemo radiation, to preoperative chemo radiation. Why? This is uh, an old study from our group. And we saw that patients with complete or co close to complete pathological response have a local control very close to 100%. And they have a metastasis-free survival of around 90%. So it's important to improve the rate of complete response. How can we do? There is a very simple way to do this. And this is another study we perform on 2000 patients, Italian patients, it was very, very simple. We retrospectively consider the rate of complete pathological response compared to the interval between chemo radiation and surgery. When this interval was within six weeks, the rate of complete response was 12%. When the interval was between seven and 12 weeks, the rate was double, 23%. When the interval was more of 13 weeks, this rate was 30%. So close to one out of three patients have complete pathological response. So one message is talk with your surgeons, try to convince them to wait. When you talk with surgeon, they, they answer, you know, Alessia, uh, we are able to do a lot of things, but waiting is not something nice for us, but they have to wait because this way 
is the simplest way to improve the rate of complete pathological response and to improve outcome. Now let's go for watch and wait policy. What is it? It's very simple. After a long course chemo radiation, you wait six, 10 weeks, possibly more, as I told you. Then you proceed with endoscopy, digital rectal examination, and possibly MRI. If there is a complete clinical response, if the tumor disappears, you avoid surgery and you go for a careful follow-up of the patient. Why should you use this policy? Well, because it works. Several years ago, a Brazilian surgeon that, uh, performed this study. She was a lady, performed chemo radiation. She performed chemo radiation in patients with uh, uh, advanced rectal cancer. And then in patients with incomplete response, proceeded with radical surgery. In the other group, patient with complete clinical response, she just follow the patient, avoiding surgery. And then she compared the results of patient treated with a W and W, watch and wait policy, with the best category of resected patients, the one with complete pathological response. And the results were astonishing. Okay, in the resection group, several patients had colostomy or ileostomy. In the W&W group of 71 patients, there were only three metastases, the same of these 22 patients resected. There were only two out of 71 patients with the endorectal recurrence. And uh, incredibly enough, the results in terms of survival and disease-free survival were better compared to patients having resection. So they show, they publish this incredible curve of overall survival, a completely horizontal curve at 10 years, 100% of patients alive. When uh, this paper was published, people start smiling. These guys should be crazy, how possible? But someone was tempted to replicate this experience. And so some years ago, a systematic review was performed, including 23 studies. And actually they saw that two-year local withdrawal rate was only 15%. But most importantly, 95% of this group were saved by delayed surgery. So, this policy works. They were not able to see any significant difference between weight and watch policy and surgery in terms of local recurrences, cancer-specific mortality, disease-free survival, and overall survival. Let me show in more detail one of the study. In this study, they selected patients with MRI, endoscopy, and also biopsies. And they follow up the, uh, up the patient with MRI endoscopy every three to six months. And again, they compare their results with the best group of resected patients, meaning the one with pathological complete response. What they saw was that in 21 patients, only one had recurrence and was saved by delayed surgery. All the other patients were without any kind of recurrence of the disease. The results in the control group was a little bit uh, lower, as you can see here. And they concluded that a wait and see policy is able to produce results at least as good as that of patients with a pathological complete response after surgery. And again, they show this incredible overall survival of 100% uh, at five years. Most importantly, they demonstrated that patients without surgery showed 
better bowel punch, less use of fats, less colonic irradiation, less problem of overflatus, less incontinence, lower mean defecation frequency. Put all together, they had a better quality of life. Why? Because yes, anterior resection is a surgical procedure able to save the sphincter, but not to save the organ. And these patients suffer by the low anterior resection syndrome. It's a highly prevalent, impaired quality of life, sometimes required definitely stomach, and is produced by mechanical and neurological different factors. It affects around 80 to 90% of patients. There are two categories. One uh, uh, include fecal agency, incontinence, increased frequency. The other one include constipation, feeling of incomplete evacuation, and bowel emptying difficulties. Some patients report both categories. Uh, so, when? When can we proceed with this particular treatment of rectal cancer? Well, when there is a complete clinical response, meaning when there is no residual tumor on only some fibrosis on MRI, you can see here some sign of residual fibrosis, but MRI is able to distinguish it. When there are no lymph nodes after chemo radiation, when there is no residual tumor at endoscopy, at digital examination, um, when there is no palpable tumor, you can see here in the D figure uh, the appearance of a complete clinical response. This is the tumor before the treatment. This is the situation of clinical complete response. Some pale area some erythematous area, sometimes there is a little ulcer, but the tumor disappeared. When? When there is clinical complete response and when the patient is available for a, for a close follow-up. Close means four times a year in the first year and two times a year in the following years. This is important because if there is tumor growth, this patient can be saved by the surgeon. Uh, is it acceptable? Is it accepted by international guidelines? The answer is yes. As I show you, this is the same slide. This is the last version of NCCN guidelines of this year. And you can see here this small w is the small w referred to this comment. I summarize this comment here. Watch and wait policy may be considered in patient with complete response at digital rectal examination, MRI and endoscopy. They are not talking about biopsies. In centers with experience of multidisciplinary team, means we need cooperation, obviously, with the surgeon, with the medical oncologist, Radiologist and after careful discussion with the patient, we had you have to explain to the patient. Okay, actually, we don't have large randomized studies showing that W and W policy is the same of standard treatment, but there are a lot of evidence that it works and that uh, it can improve quality of life. So, in conclusion. What's W and W? It's no surgery, but careful examination in patient with complete uh, clinical response after chemo radiation. Why? Because the results are the same of surgery, if not better, with better quality of life. When? After complete clinical response, if a multidisciplinary team is available, after discussion with the patient, and with a close follow-up. Is it acceptable? The answer is yes. Based on the international guideline, is now a therapeutic option considered as acceptable. Thank you very much.